Welcome back to another spoiler-free anime review. Princess Jellyfish offers a more realistic depiction of otaku than you're probably used to. Instead of the anime-obsessed men, most of the Jellyfish cast are female otaku obsessed with things other than anime. For example, some are obsessed with trains, the romance of the Three Kingdoms, or collecting dolls and tailoring kimonos for them, just to name a few. Although these women are unemployed, they live together in a large building one of their parents own. Oddly enough, I admire this environment because there's a mutual respect for their obsessions, but none of these interests overlap to create arguments about them. The story primarily follows 18-year-old Tsukimi, whose jellyfish obsession leads her to a disagreement with an aquarium shop over placing incompatible jellyfish in the same tank. However, due to her social anxiety, she's unable to speak up. Fortunately, Karako, her knight in high heels, saves the day by speaking up for her and intimidating the attendant in the process. I'd also consider Karako an otaku as he's obsessed with women's fashion. His charismatic and outspoken personality causes him to quickly become friends with the reluctant Tsukimi, becoming the catalyst for his introduction to her friends. The overarching plot of Princess Jellyfish revolves around the otaku's struggle to keep their home from being demolished and replaced by a luxury hotel. Considering they don't own the building and are all unemployed, their only choice is to raise money and buy it or become homeless. The matter is further complicated as it's partially tied with politics, coincidentally involving Karako's political family. The plot quickly becomes a complex web of intrigue and deception with Karako in the middle trying to save his new friend's home. I appreciated the positive-natured atmosphere the show provides. Karako encourages the otaku to realize the value of their skills honed under the isolation of their obsession. I initially had mixed feelings about Karako because I expected him to be one of those extroverts attempting to pry some pitiful introverts out of their quote-unquote shell. I really hate when people say that, by the way. He's open-minded to their interests and polishes them to expose their best sides with respect to their individuality. The anime also did a great job of developing Tsukimi and Karako by giving them flashbacks depicting their bittersweet history. The anime is loaded with cute, comical, and heartwarming moments between them as they form a special and complex bond you don't usually find in anime. Additionally, I enjoyed Tsukimi's interactions with Kuroko's brother as it creates a comical dynamic where he only recognizes her when she's dressed up. Ironically, much of her social anxiety is gone when she's dressed up fancy because she can't see two feet in front of her face without her Coke bottle glasses. You can't be afraid of eye contact when you can't see the person's face. Unfortunately, the remainder of the otaku were underdeveloped and relegated to being comedic relief characters, which isn't too bad considering it's primarily a comedy. I also enjoyed seeing them interact with each other, as each had their own unique quirks associated with their hobbies. I just think they should have been so much more considering how rarely we see non-anime otaku depicted in anime. Jellyfish also offers a decent amount of tertiary characters that I enjoyed for their comedic antics, especially Yoshio, the BMW-obsessed chauffeur of Karako's family. As much as I enjoyed the anime for its humor and heartwarming moments, I came away feeling like it fell shy of its true potential. Although it ends on a satisfying stopping point for a significant part of its plot, it's clear the anime needs more episodes to tie up loose ends. If this could have been 24 episodes or just focused on Karako, Mako's family a little less, I think the overall experience could have felt much more complete. Overall, I give Princess Jellyfish a 7.5 out of 10. While it's not perfect, I think the anime provides a unique experience saturated with jokes and wholesome themes of friendship and acceptance. I haven't read the manga, but the anime was produced during its infancy, so I'm sure there's loads of additional content within its 17 volumes. So if you enjoyed the anime, go ahead and check it out. Princess Jellyfish is a fun little anime to marathon over a rainy day. Just remember to enjoy the moment and keep moderate expectations for its conclusion. The anime is enjoyable with sub or dub, but I think its dub translation could have been a little more accurate, though I didn't notice any major issues when flipping back and forth between episodes. If you decide to check out Princess Jellyfish, come back and let me know what you think. Thanks to Nia-chan and all who support these videos through Patreon donations or buying anime merchandise through my affiliate links in the video description. I'll see you tomorrow with my review of Neo Tokyo.